This preoperative patient education informational video is intended to educate patients on specific medical procedures. Patients are strongly encouraged to contact their surgeon for more information or with questions regarding the information presented in this video. Hello, I'm Dr. Bruce Perler, a member of the Society for Vascular Surgery. This video will help you understand the carotid endarterectomy procedure. Carotid endarterectomy is the surgical procedure to treat carotid artery disease, specifically by removing a blockage in a carotid artery. The carotid arteries, one in the right and the other in the left side of the neck, are two of the main vessels that supply blood and oxygen to the brain. Plaque, due to arteriosclerosis or hardening of the arteries, can obstruct blood flow to the brain in the carotid arteries and can cause a stroke, either when the artery is so narrow that the blood supply to the brain becomes inadequate or when bits of the plaque break loose and move into the brain and block off the blood supply there. Carotid endarterectomy is the procedure whereby the surgeon actually removes the plaque, restoring normal flow in the diseased carotid artery. Carotid artery disease is responsible for 20 to 60 percent of the more than 700,000 strokes that occur each year in the United States. These strokes are preventable through carotid endarterectomy. Therefore, the major benefit of carotid endarterectomy, its one and only purpose, is to prevent stroke, a potentially devastating complication of cardiovascular disease. It's not intended to make you feel better, to improve your thinking, or sharpen your memory. Its purpose is to prevent stroke. Carotid endarterectomy is one of the most rigorously studied and perfected surgical procedures. It's been performed for more than 50 years, and in the hands of experienced vascular surgeons, it is safe and highly effective in preventing stroke, and its benefits are extremely durable. Numerous clinical trials involving thousands of patients have proven its safety and efficacy and superiority when compared to the best medical therapy for patients with significant carotid artery disease. Carotid endarterectomy is indicated in the patient who has a significant blockage of the carotid artery and has experienced a previous stroke or a mini stroke known as a transient ischemic attack or TIA. However, even a patient who has not experienced a previous symptom may be a candidate for carotid endarterectomy if the blockage is severe. Carotid endarterectomy may be performed with you asleep under general anesthesia or possibly with a local anesthetic to numb the neck while you are awake depending upon the surgeons and your preference. An incision is made in the side of the neck and the carotid artery is exposed. Clamps are then placed on the healthy part of the artery below and above the disease segment. An incision is made in the artery and the disease segment is then peeled out of the vessel with a special instrument. While the artery is clamped, your surgeon may place a temporary shunt to deliver blood to the brain, depending upon your anatomy and other information collected and monitored during the surgery. Once all the disease material is removed, the incision in the artery is repaired, often using a patch of material, like putting a roof on the incision to widen the vessel so that as it heals, it will not narrow the vessel. If the operation was performed under general anesthesia, you'll be awakened in the operating room and a brief neurologic exam will be performed. Carotid endarterectomy, like any surgical procedure, has potential complications. The incidence of complications varies from surgeon to surgeon and hospital to hospital, although the incidence is very low in the hands of experienced surgeons today. The risk of death from this procedure is exceedingly low, well under 1%. The purpose of the operation is to prevent stroke, but ironically, stroke is one of the potential complications. The risk varies from 1 to 5 percent, depending upon the problems that led to the diagnosis of the condition. Stress on the heart from the surgery or anesthesia may result in a heart attack or myocardial infarction, although the risk today is very low, well under 3 to 4 percent. There are a number of cranial nerves around the carotid artery that may be bruised during the surgery and result in some postoperative symptoms that in the vast majority of cases are temporary. This includes hoarseness, some weakness of the tongue, a slight lip droop, numbness of the ear or skin of the neck, or some trouble swallowing. On average, about 5 to 10 percent of patients may experience cranial nerve symptoms. Since blood thinners are often used during the procedure, there is a small risk of bleeding after the surgery. Some patients may experience temporary swings in their blood pressure in the first few hours postoperatively, so your surgeon may choose to monitor you in a special nursing unit after the surgery. 
An alternative to carotid endarterectomy is carotid angioplasty and stenting. In this procedure, a catheter is placed, usually in an artery in the groin, and advanced into the carotid artery. An arteriogram or dye study is performed to get a picture of the blockage, and the plaque is balloon dilated, and then a stent is placed. The most important potential risks of carotid stenting are similar to those of carotid endarterectomy, namely stroke, death, and heart attack. Although cranial nerve injury will be avoided, there are other complications not seen with carotid endarterectomy, such as the risk of allergic reaction to the dye, kidney injury from the dye, and bleeding in the groin. Today, carotid angioplasty and stenting is still under clinical investigation and is recommended in special circumstances for patients with significant carotid artery disease who are felt to be at too high risk for conventional carotid endarterectomy, either due to other medical illnesses or specific anatomic conditions. The other alternative is medical therapy. This includes antiplatelet therapy with aspirin and possibly clopidogrel, treatment of other risk factors such as high blood pressure and diabetes and statin medications and complete cessation of smoking. Medical therapy is just as important long term in patients who undergo carotid endarterectomy or carotid stenting. This patient education video is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.